I see a lot of marketing on social media around new technologies in the building automation industry, um, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data, you know, the Internet of Things. But what I don't see is that the development of these wireless sensors, and today's discussion is mostly wireless temperature sensors as an example, they don't really consider the constraints or the challenges that we have in the building construction industry. So in this video, I'm gonna run through five issues that I believe hold back the wider adoption and implementation of wireless temperature sensors in the buildings industry. So if you are a building owner or a facility manager, and you want to install wireless sensors or your BMS company, perhaps you're a consultant that wants to start specifying the provision of wireless temperature sensors. Um, and also if you're a, a supplier, uh, a company that makes these sort of things, then this video is for you. So the first issue is that in construction, when we are installing the building for the very first time, we have these quite open floor plans. We don't have ceilings, and we have a lot of containment running around the floor. So it's, you know, it's, it's a phase of the, of the job that never ever gets compressed out. Like we'll compress out commissioning and tuning, but the actual building of the building and supplying, you know, fan coils and cables and, and power supplies, that's never going to get compressed out. So the BMS contractor or the electrician might have two guys on the floor for two weeks. And they are running around you know, up a, a platform ladder or a, a scissor lift and they're installing the 24 volts AC power supply to each VAV box and they're installing the BACnet MSTP daisy chained comms cable around each VAV box. Um, while they're there they're going to be you know installing and cabling out to the two uh, common return air dampers, maybe some return air temperature sensors, some return air CO2 sensors, VOC sensors, um, there might be a few little exhaust fans for some kitchenettes, some you know outside air fans that are wiring cables out to. Um, maybe there's four after hours buttons they're gonna wire out to. There might be a thermal meter measuring the consumption, energy consumption from many supplementary package units. There could be four to eight electric meters on the distribution boards for lighting and power. So there's a whole bunch of things that BMS installers are running around installing over that two-week period. It's very convenient for them at that time to also just run a hardwired temperature sensor cable from the controller down to the VAV box. It's convenient. Um, there's no real time constraint there that sort of justifies us installing wireless sensors. So the first thing was that in the construction phase of a project, it is convenient and reasonably easy to install a hardwired cable down to a temperature sensor. The second thing is, obviously a wireless sensor costs more than a wired sensor. Um, but the other part of it is, and I just witnessed my very first 30 story building last week, full wireless sensors. Um, so it was good to see that in action. What I didn't realize is that on these floor plates, you don't just have the wireless sensors and a receiver somewhere, because the size of the floor plates and concrete and different types of things, they would have a whole bunch of, I think they call them transceivers. So on this floor, you could have, you know, four, six or eight transceiver devices installed around the floor, possibly two on the, the north and the south of the floor, and then, you know, four, six more, four more. So you need these transceivers to deal with the signal around those areas and then sort of send it back to the main receiver at the BMS. So other than the additional cost of the wireless temperature sensor, you also have this additional cost of these other supporting hardware devices that you need for the system to, to be a completely working system. The other thing that I had with these guys that was really good, the BMS company, they had a graphic for every floor plate and they had on there, you know, uh, all the temperature sensors, their reading, um, the signal strength and the battery status. So every floor you could open this page up and you could see what the signal strength was and the battery status, which was, I thought was really awesome. Um, but you got 30 floors of that. So other than the more expensive temperature sensor, the wireless sensor, there's all the supporting hardware to make it work, all the transceivers and receivers, or if you, if you even call them that. And there's the extra cost possibly around building additional monitoring points and graphics 
that you really re that you really need to be able to better maintain this wireless network system and make sure it works all the time. I think they also wrote some software that if the wireless, if the battery went flat and the sensor dropped out, that the BAV would default back to the common return temperature. Of course, it's not ideal, but at least it was better than nothing and the thing would still work. So there was some more software logic around that sort of fail-safe scenario if the batteries ran out and you hadn't changed them yet. So that second point was probably a significant increase in cost. Now point three sort of ties in with point two was that when you do this the base build so in Australia when you do the, the construction the, the open plan for what we call it the base build and then later on they have the fit outs. So during the base build project we're designing how many VAV boxes we have where our wireless sensors will be and our transceivers and things and all this sort of stuff and then once we're sort of halfway up the building around level 10, 15, 20 whatever it is the lower floors will start to go through the fit outs and there will be possibly a different consultant even. And now we're building, you know, partitions for you know, boardrooms and meeting rooms and offices and little breakout areas and all sorts of stuff. So if you have a wireless sensor, they're gonna start moving into rooms and your signal strength could become an issue. So, you know, before you were sort of this far from the transceiver to the wireless sensor, now there's a, a boardroom here and a meeting room in the corner. So that wireless sensor's gotta get through, you know, quite a few walls to get back. Um, you know, they, maybe they'll be installing additional supplementary um, fan coil units or package units, condenser water package units in the ceilings. You know, the ceiling gets more, more cluttered. More cluttered. Um, that's going to affect signal strength from the wireless transmitters back to the main receivers. So the point here is that as the building progresses from base build into fit out, which we know nothing about during the base build design, additional challenges are going to crop up with the performance of the wireless sensors probably meaning that you need to install even more and more and more of these transceivers to get to sort of get a better signal strength around the whole floor. Now the fourth issue, which is my personal biggest issue, is the batteries. Um, so this job from last week, each sense had two uh, AA batteries in it. And although the batteries probably aren't expensive, the cost of replacing these batteries, I think is going to build up and become more of an issue in the, the long term life of the building. So I'll just look at my notes for this. So I sort of this morning was just crunching through some numbers while having a coffee and thinking about what we should say for this week's session. And um, I sort of worked out that I reckon that it would take two hours to replace the temperature sensors on a floor. And that's sort of considered like some messing around where um, you get to the floor and it hasn't been organized, you've got to come back the next day or something like that. Um, so if we had uh, two hours per floor, and we've got 30 floors, that's 60 hours. So I reckon at $250 an hour, we're looking at $15,000 to replace all the VAV space with zone wireless temperature sensors. So if we have, if we're sort of estimating our building as having a 15 year life cycle, we're gonna replace those sensors three times because I think these batteries generally last for between three and five years. You can't wait till five years because it doesn't work. So maybe at around four years, you need some sort of a rolling program over a four year cycle to change batteries out. So I think that in a 15 to 20 year life cycle of a building, you're gonna replace all those sensors three times. So that's $45,000 of wireless sensor battery replacements over the life of the BMS. Now, it's not gonna be as simple as that even because the BMS company is probably not going to go through every four years and just do a, a full replacement of all the sense, the batteries. I probably said sensors a few times, the batteries. It's impractical to try and do it in one sweep. So there would probably be a rolling program. Now, if you think about, you know, in a 30-story building, there could be, you know, maybe 12 months between when the very first sensors were installed and the building finished. So there's a year difference between the first sensors and the last sensors. So I'm thinking what would happen is every two months, I think we would replace one floor sensor. So after a three or four years from the start of the, the job being built at the three year mark, four year mark, every two months, you're going to replace one floor temperature sensors batteries. And that's still okay. But I actually think that when in real life, it's going to become a bit more of a mess than that because the, the BMS guy will go up to the receptionist, introduce himself, then find out that for some reason they never got the email that had been arranged with the building manager. 
then you've got to sort of go away and come back. Or if it is organized, the BMS tech would sort of walk around the floor, start changing the batteries. There would definitely be at least on every second floor, there'll be a locked room, the CEO's office or an important room where there's some, some sensitive stuff in there and you've missed one or two cents, you've got to come back, you know, next month or the following month. Um, there would be some tenants that say, look, we, we're we okay with this, but you have to do it out of hours. We don't want you doing it while our staff is here. So that's an out of hours exercise. And then that sort of kicks off to the usual, you know, we're going to arrange a security guard to escort you on the floor. So I just think that, you know, it, it's just going to become a, a pain in the ass, this whole thing. And um, what's probably going to happen is, you know, it's probably going to take longer than two hours because the service, other than the that you know, messing around we just discussed there, but the server tech will come to site and the plan will say, right, today you're doing maintenance to AHUs 1, 2, and 3, and you're replacing the batteries on level 10. And then, you know, just with, you know, doing a bit of work here and having some lunch and then going, coming back and then going on the floor and, you know, sort of going around looking for the sensors and changing that, it's just going to actually end up being quite a lengthy process end to end to actually do it. So, that point about the batteries for me is the biggest issue out of all these things. The other, the last one I had, the fifth issue was that I don't think that widely the manufacturers of wireless sensors have, you know, a temperature sensor, a temperature and humidity sensor, and a temperature, humidity and CO2 sensor. Now there, there definitely would be some of those, but if you're a manufacturer or a company, you're storing this stuff, a lot of the time you won't have that complete range available to you. So there would be times where you're putting a, a wireless temperature sensor on the wall and then next to it is a CO2 sensor, which is impractical because now you're cabling back to that box. And secondly, the architect probably doesn't want two sensors on the wall. Um, sometimes you're buying a third party uh, wireless sensor because that's more convenient, you might have one, and it might be quite an ugly sensor. I've seen a lot of that where you know the, the manufacturer's t temperature sensors, the wide ones are quite beautiful and then some third party supplier has a sensor that develops quite, it's, it's not the same size box, it's a bit bigger, looks a bit different, it just doesn't look good. So even in that situation where you know, you've know you've worked through all the transceivers and also other sorts of stuff, you really want to do this, that last thing could just hold it back because it's just, that little thing is a bit of a problem. So just to round that out, those five issues in my mind are really quite big issues, but um, Perhaps they're not deal breakers um, individually, but when you actually put all five of those issues together and you're sort of sitting there and thinking, you know, it's convenient to run a hardwired cable during construction. It's a lot more money to make it work. There's more risk through the fit out stage. The sensors aren't going to be all the same. Then, the, then the, you know, does the building owner or the FM, are they going to be happy with these battery replacements, um, you know, for the next forever? So, yeah, those are the things that when you combine together, I don't think it really works. Of course, there is a need for wireless sensors. Um, I was just thinking this morning, where you have these big, um, beautiful lobby entries to buildings with all these beautiful stone walls, the architect doesn't want a sensor on there. So you might you might hand over with the return air temperature control, doesn't work very well, and then once the building's handed over, you might run around there and stick a few wireless sensors on the wall to get some better control. Um, situations where you've forgotten to coordinate uh, the conduit going in the column, you're stuck, use a wireless sensor. So there will be situations where wireless sensors are a good idea, but I think that they should be used uh, for the right applications rather than just blanketly, let's install wireless sensors over 30 floors. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of that, uh, at least when you're thinking about wireless sensors. And uh, please like and subscribe and see the description below for some of the services that I provide.